is about addressing climate change. Sorry, I just wanted to start recording. Of course, of course. So what we're talking about here is addressing climate change. Uh, and what we're talking about here is how do we bring technology to bear on one of the, some of the biggest challenges that all of us are facing. Now, for most people, challenges, you know, represent, uh, you know, hurdles to go over. Uh, but for us entrepreneurs, as well as people who are looking to solve and build, they represent opportunities. So what we offer to you out here is this framework uh, at the Green Pill Festival. And in the build up to that is to look at this opportunity set that is staring humanity in the face. And how do you bring your skill sets? How do you bring blockchain technologies to leverage uh, and solve and address this? Today's session is all about brainstorming. It's about ideation. It's about, okay, what are the challenges that you see out there? It's about, okay, what could you potentially do out there? Uh, and just to make things interesting, because we really value your inputs, we're going to have, you know, we're going to ask you to add your ideas, your thoughts in the chat, right? And uh, we're going to be constantly monitoring that. Uh, we're going to be calling upon people uh, to raise their hands and share their ideas. Uh, and yes, uh, the one that uh, seems the most, how would I say, most challenging, the most ambitious, uh, the most feasible, and it could be any of those, we would love to you know, offer you an NFT as, uh, as a token of appreciation for really participating in this conversation. So that's what we have for you. Just all of us coming to bear with our thoughts, with our ideas on this big challenge, which is big opportunity, which is climate change. Ritu? Yeah. Uh, so we'll start today's session. Uh, before we start the session, let's just uh, also give a shout out to our other speaker. Uh, Earth-based soul. Uh, maybe you could just come on stage and say hi to everyone. Does he have access? Uh, yes, I made him the co-host just now. Sure. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um. Uh, thank you so much for adding me. I really look forward for this uh, session. So. I'm glad to be here. So uh, thanks for that, uh, Soul. And today's session, so we're going to break it down. Uh, it's a 60-minute session. We are looking at a quick recap of what we did yesterday, where we had like a small ReFi 101, where we explained what ReFi is and what's the potential use cases that we have. And then we'll follow on that with the ideation part where Pranav will come in and speak about the potential use cases that it is there. And then we'll have the open brainstorming session. We would like to hear from all of you, like from everything that we explain over the first 30 minutes, what are the kind of ideas that you would come up with? And we could close out this by speaking about these refi opportunities, especially what's possible through the Green Pill Festival, what kind of tracks are there and what you should take part in. So we'll get started. First of the refi recap. Uh, so the first big uh, question yeah, is okay. why, why should you care about refi, right? Like what's this big thing? Like Pranav mentioned, uh, it's trying to solve something that's really huge. Uh, so some of the biggest problems that humanity is facing, the ones that we call the billion people problem, problems that affect more than billion people, uh, these are climate and social related problems. And uh, Believe it or not, actually, this is a multi-trillion dollar opportunity and the sector is massive. And there is, for the longest time, it's been difficult to scale this space. And what's the main reason for that? It comes down to lack of transparency and incentives. Right? All of us have been there where we have donated to some charity and we have no clue where that money went. And all of us have also been there where we have volunteered for some social activity and probably got no recognition from that. So none of our parents say that, hey, why don't you uh, not become an engineer and go become a social worker, right? So primarily these public goods related actions for the greater good, these do not have incentives. And also for people who do these kind of things, NGOs and other impact organizations, uh, they do not have high transparency. So this has really slowed down the space, though we all know all the problems related to climate and social are severe. 
refi is trying to solve this space this whole transparency and incentives and that's the whole focus area for us and how we are trying to bring it is refi so think about refi as on one side we have climate and social solutions on the other side we have blockchain and you're merging these two and looking at multiple possibilities that is what refi stands for and the idea and the hope that we have by accelerating the sector is that it will bring speed and scale to climate action and it will help us build a better uh, sustainable and socially equitable future just think about it like what if through refi you could think about a paradigm where you could earn from recycling or you could earn from harvesting rainwater or even planting trees because this is happening right now there are refi projects around the world that make money from cleaning up beaches from planting trees right and this opens up a huge new possibility of green jobs so as technologists we are looking we sit at the forefront of developing these kind of solutions and building it out for the larger world where people can start using and leverage software uh, for these kind of green jobs so to wrap up what exactly refi is it is reimagining value of positive social and climate actions and uh, this is a new kind of financial system a little different from defi because defi was all about decentralizing centralized financial system with refi we are looking at how can we decentralize and then regenerate because the current economic is market is all about making profits right we only care about profits we do not care whether we are cutting down trees or mining uh, mountains for benefit so how can we reimagine this because we need to have a balance right and this is the interesting space that refi operates prana over to you uh, i i uh, we have a few uh, use cases and things so we'll start speaking about that now awesome thank you so much for that prithu for setting the stage on that one uh greetings guys for this part of the session i really want you to put your thinking at on right and i'm going to start you off with a little exercise i like to see the chat active out there uh, and i'm usually always tracking what's happening right because it's it's good to get an idea of what you guys are thinking saying or doing Uh, so very quickly if if i can request everybody to just add you know where are they are at the moment in india right just to get a sense of what they uh, where they are i would love to see that and also what do you think is the full form of refi right and let's get crazy out here you know what would refi stand for right and remember it's like the sky's the limit it's the ideation part of it right so that's what i want you to type in there where you're from and what according to you is the full form of free fire and while you're thinking that let me just you know put this into perspective as to why you know why are we really even talking about this problem so i don't know if you caught the news the last couple of days uh awesome guys i love you know we are all over from india so thank you so much for sharing keep that coming i don't know if you caught the news the last couple of days but apparently it's the hottest february in 122 years right now just think about that for a moment right and that's probably since we started measuring temperature right 122 years ago we are expecting heat waves this particular summer what does that mean for all of us well i mean if you thought that climate change was something that was like really out there and the global south was you know some island in the pacific well think again we are the global south right we are facing climate change it's going to be the hottest summer on record probably we hopefully don't have you know this el nino or sort of drought situation or the rains don't get affected so all of these are like big problems that are staring us in the face why am i telling you all of this well because you know the governments are very well aware of this globally everybody is aware of this challenge and there is capital coming to bear on this and by that i mean there's big money coming to the space globally governments are scrambling to put together solutions to this there are statutory tailwinds by that i mean you've already heard right in india reliance has already confirmed that they're going to be moving their portfolio from oil to renewables so think about that the smartest guys in india are already deciding well you know what this oil business is not really that interesting anymore right so let's let's think about doing renewables right 
that's the change that is happening. The smart people are already moving towards climate solutions. And I'm sure, I'm pretty sure all the people in this room are definitely forward looking and pretty much up there on the curve in terms of smartness because they're in this room and they're looking at this opportunity that climate brings. So that's one big factor that I want you to always keep an eye out for as you're looking at the news from today on, what's happening around climate, you know, who's doing renewables and you know, what's, what's all this noise about the government talking about climate action. So that's a huge tailwind that's coming. There's the other aspect that really makes all of this very, very positive for the entire industry, right? Blockchain has been looking for a use case for the longest time, right? And climate potentially is the use case that blockchain has been looking for. Let me give you some examples. Think of a particular location. Let's talk about an actual project that's happening right now in the interiors of Maharashtra, where there are there is a, a major player in uh, the Indian ecosystem, uh, you know, somebody like uh, AWS, uh, who's actually working and coordinating with a bunch of startups to enable IDs, IDs for individuals using the Aadhaar stack, you know, linking the Aadhaar stack and blockchain to provide them IDs on chain, which enable them to get, uh, you know, benefits in a closed ecosystem. So think of a situation where the government says, you know what, we want to offer you money right but we want to make sure it's coming to you and we want to make sure that you don't spend it on unnecessary stuff for example you know things that you don't really need but you spend it on for example school supplies or ration right that's an actual project that's happening today in india uh, let me give you another project right think of you know uh, a school in in maharashtra uh, that is capturing the progress of students who are using tablets to learn math and English and all these different subjects and all of their progress is being captured on chain right and based on their learnings you know there is intervention being done to make the students more proficient in English or math as the need may be this my friends is another project that's happening in India right you might wonder right how does this really come into refi I mean is this really refi it is and the reason we call it refi is not because there's uh, there is obviously money involved in this, but not because it's like you know a regenerative agriculture angle, but the fact that it is producing impact, leveraging blockchain. Now one would think you know what is it that really makes blockchain so suited for all of these very interesting use cases? Well, a couple of things, right? First of all, blockchain enables trust in a trustless environment. You see, one of the biggest challenges with impact projects is that, you know, somebody says I've done something good. How do you really know that good has been done? Well, in the normal scenario that we have today, people pay auditing agencies, somebody like a KPMG or a Vera Standard, and they come in and they say, you know what? Yes, good work has been done here. And they give you a certificate. That is a very expensive process. So what, what does blockchain do out there? Well, because blockchain captures data at the point of origin using probably IoT devices, uh, blockchain brings those data points on chain. And once it's on chain, uh, it's immutable. So the data can be trusted. So therefore, you have trust in a trustless environment. What's the other benefit of blockchain? Well, it enables collaboration at scale. You know, one of the biggest challenges when you are doing climate action or all of these big projects is that how do you get people to organize properly? Blockchain works very well for that because blockchain provides the incentives for people to align and come together and work. You've all experienced that, right? Being part of DAOs or being part of, you know, other of these bounty hunts that you do, you're incentivized to do the right thing. Blockchain provides you that. Blockchain also enables, and I think here I want to introduce the concept of digital measurement reporting and verification, which is the building block so far as climate action is concerned. Because one of the biggest challenges for impact has been that how do you measure impact? And you don't want to pay huge fees to do that. So you use technology, you use digital means to measure, report, and verify impact. Right? How does this really apply, you would think, in a, in a use case? Well, another example is that suppose a farmer is saying that, you know what, he's producing organic produce. Usually this farmer has to go to this certifying body, which gives him a stamp stating that, yes, you are now organic 
But suppose the farmer had sensors in his field which measured the soil, which measured chemicals in the soil. Now, the fact that the, the, the technology can provide that certification means that the farmer doesn't have to depend upon any of these auditing agencies. And even more importantly, these data points are available on a continuous basis rather than like, you know, every six months. So now the farmer can actually prove that he's producing organic without having to get himself certified. This leads to a transparent supply chain. That's another great example of where refi comes in, right? And you have lots of agencies, again, working in the transparent supply chain part of this business, which is also refi, by the way, right? So what have we talked about? We've talked about impact projects. We've talked about you know, schools using uh, blockchain and refi. Uh, we've talked about, uh, you know, uh, uh, specifically uh, ID proofs. And here's the interesting thing, just to build on that ID proof part of, uh, part of the point. Now, you know, normally, and this is one of the biggest challenges that people have when people talk about Aadhaar, right? People say that the government knows everything about us. Well, on blockchain, we have what we call zero knowledge proofs. And you probably, you guys already know about that, right? Which provides a level of abstraction. So you can actually have an anonymity layer on top of your identity. So that, you know, the contract can confirm that you say you are who you are without revealing who you are. I mean, if you think about it, this has so many applications. I mean, think about voting, for example. Think about providing access to refugees, for example. Just one hour back, I was on another uh, Rotary conference, online conference, where we are talking about a blockchain solution for victims of abuse. You know, people who want to, uh, you know, be part of the system, but are scared to share their identity. Well, blockchain supports that, right? And that is also a part of refi. Now, you guys are probably thinking, yeah, ye refi na jada bada nahi ho gaya. I mean, we are talking about refi, ye bhi kar sakta hai, wo bhi kar sakta hai, wo bhi kar sakta hai. So in a nutshell, if I were to say, you know, what is refi? Refi is all about putting a Web3 wrapper onto your Web2 or real world impact project. It's as simple as that. You know, leveraging technology to help your project get discovered, leveraging technology to make sure that you're removing middlemen, leveraging technology to enable lots and lots of people globally to contribute to your project. All of that falls under the, this container that we call refi. But that's not all, you know, because refi as a term is pretty new. It's probably like one, one and a half year old. So we are building this as we do this, right? I know of a project in refi, which is, you know, taking money from America, providing universal basic income to people in, in Afghanistan, right? So, they, so think about it, right? Somebody in America donates like $5 a week, which for an American is probably the cost of an ice cream. But that $5 translates to a week's supply of food to a family in Afghanistan, right? That helps. And because there's no middlemen, because it's all on chain, there is trust in the trustless environment, there's collaboration at scale. It's possible for these $5 to make an impact without getting lost in these banking charges that you know, most institutions and organizations have. So think about how blockchain, how... Uh, this technology can provide this wrapper for impact, bringing data points on chain, uh, getting funding to your project, enabling collaboration at scale, right? While all of you guys are thinking around this, right? And I've given you quite a few ideas. I'm very curious to have inputs from you guys, right? To understand what comes to your mind when you're thinking about, you know, blockchain and potentially refi, right? And I want you to put in the chat box, you know, any thoughts that you might have about where you think this technology would help. So think of, you know, collaboration at scale. Think of trust in a trustless environment. Just put down some ideas in the chat box. And if you have any questions around all of this, feel free to put them there too, right? Because the whole idea out here is to stretch your brain, is to get you to start thinking about the possibilities without getting caught up in, okay, how would we actually do it? Because ideas really start with thinking big. So I want you to think really big in terms of this. I'm looking at the chat. Nothing happening there, guys. Uh, just reading up. Somebody said, you know, regenerative finance. Great for that. Renewable energy finance. That's a good one, too. Food distribution network wired out. Love that, Harkat. 
and there's actually just to let you know there's actually projects which are doing that right uh, and it goes both both ways let me uh, let me tell you one is the supply side you know where you can leverage enable refi uh, to build the supply side i know of a project called res r a i s r a i z vertical farms which is essentially creating these huge walls in urban areas which are urban farms they are leveraging technology to again show traceability and transparency in the supply chain uh, and you know they are getting a premium they are they're starting to sell that in the market right so that's an example but on the other way also when people are donating food right we don't want bad food coming from anywhere right so there's there is this possibility of leveraging this technology to ensure that food gets to where it's needed right even when it's just donated so there's this goes both ways you know the supply side and also on the demand side madhav writes about something like teach for india but using the web3 wrapper refi you know that's that's a great example imagine if there would be bounties you know where these teach for india teachers would be paid and it necessarily may not be money let's say that we had a refi ecosystem where these people would be given trust tokens you know because they have taught like 10000 people we respect them and we give them those 10000 tokens those 10000 tokens may not necessarily translate to money but they translate to a reputation score now that reputation score can mean a lot in the web3 world and also in the real world so think of that blockchain enables liquidity through tokens absolutely does right but again you know we are going very technical out it i want you to think about you know how about if blockchain allows a lot of people to pool money together right isn't that also providing liquidity right let's say we we change that pool money to pool effort right that's also refi because now people are pooling effort towards something that's a great example let me also you know the next one aryan is talking about a project that provides a platform to connect people with farmers directly and buying or growing vegetables you know aryan there's lots of projects which do that but you know where they falter most of them falter because they don't achieve economies of scale it costs too much you know to get certified and they don't have a, a good demand side right blockchain solves part of these problems but you know what's the interesting thing that blockchain and refi can really bring to this <coughs> it's the fact that you could actually put together a dao a dao which says you know what we all trust each other we're going to put up money towards lending to these farmers who will then produce and sell back to us right and we can do token engineering out there so that the people who are putting up the money up front for the farmers right they are not just benefiting from the produce and the returns but they are also building up their trust they are becoming owners of this entire organization so lots of interesting things can happen out there where buying and selling of vegetables is like the basic minimum but lots of interesting collaborations communities and opportunities can be built up there petition and fundraising platform using web3 absolutely super right and this is one of the biggest problems you know that we have faced is that you know when you're putting a petition together people always think ke yaar ye kuch garbad karke sign signature laya if you were to use you know voting solutions on blockchain there would be a certain sense of traceability and transparency i know it sounds very weird right because blockchain is all about anonymity but blockchain is also about traceability and transparency so i would be sure that there are actual humans who have voted for this and a great example of this is actually gitcoin i don't know how many guys have heard about gitcoin but gitcoin has you know something called a gitcoin passport they have resistance to civil attacks so that people who say they are humans are actually humans right there's a great play in there uh vera muthu writes building a supply chain management for the farmers and making a fund section for the farmers based on the nft certificates based on the regional languages with whatsapp support wow you know that's like a proper problem statement out there vera muthu i love that right and there's lots of interesting things happen up that happen out in there especially with using nfts you know most people think of nfts as collectibles or fundraising kind of stuff but i also want to point out to you that nft is actually i mean think let me just shift the perspective for you suppose you were a stock company right just just for a moment think that you run a real company which has shares 
would you sell all your shares on day one would you give away complete ownership of your company on day one you would never do that why because you are building the company you want certain control over it you want certain you know value to accrue in it that's also the way refi looks at nfts we don't think that selling nfts a sold out nft project is the best project we don't think that we think that an nft project where the community is holding the nfts not trading them but holding them for the value that the nfts accrue that's the best way to leverage nfts you know it's all about that ownership aspect of a project right that's what i would encourage you to think thiru writes about building platform for startups to connect with investors and vcs thiru is straight away going to funding right matlab baki sab gaya the lene paise pehle lao i agree thiru totally works i'm all for it and this works too right there's great examples out there but here's the interesting thing <coughs> why do you only stop at you know just this token part of it right why do you only stop at raising money you know most people think that raising money means that your startup is a success the fact of the matter is raising money is the first step to your startup success paisa le liya na uske baad company banana padta hai right so that's where again web3 and that's where again refi can really come in because if your project is around impact if the people who hold your tokens are also building your business for you right because they believe in the impact that your business creates that is the beauty the power of a community right think amway but in a good way right think mlm marketing but done right right so that nobody is cheating anybody everybody is collaborating to build a better future right climate so i want to bring the conversation back very quickly uh to climate again right and i want to specifically give you some examples of where you know and i want to break down what do we mean by climate right in terms of climate change see one of the big things that we have in climate is that there's already a big problem that we have created climate change is here we are going to face a big challenge but if we do the right things if we reduce our emissions if we do projects which reduce our exposure to or reduce you know the accelerating rate of this climate change we still will be able to be in a better place so there's this one thing about you know reducing your climate emissions right that's again refi plays a role in that then the other aspect is whatever problem we have created solving that so for example if we pull carbon back from the atmosphere that's the reduction part of it that's again a big big opportunity the third opportunity is you know mitigation you know once something bad is going to happen right is is happening how do we reduce the effects of that and lastly there is adaptation right once we know that certain problems is definitely going to happen how do we really take care of that right i would give you examples of all of these and there are active projects happening in all of these what you see out here on your screen is a refi landscape if you were to go to a popular website in this space and we can give you links later on you would see 300 plus projects started up by people like you people who are passionate about this problem people who are looking to make a dent in the world uh people who you know the government is going to back at a certain point in time because everybody recognizes that climate change is a big problem i'm just going to pause there because you know i've been speaking like for like probably 15 20 minutes now and you guys are probably getting bored uh but yeah i i'm very happy to have start having questions or hand it back to ritu to take this further or continue if you want me to because i can keep on speaking on this this is my, my favorite topic i have plenty of more examples <laughs> yeah i i think uh, i think we would uh, want to actually speak about a really really interesting project as well that's uh, something that doesn't com completely come under the purview of things also prana mentioned maybe we could have guido speak about his solar punk nomads project it's a very interesting refi project related to climate so guido uh, earth based soul would you like to speak a little bit about your project and tell about that interesting angle as well because everyone would love to know how you are building a refi yeah um i'll introduce briefly what we are doing and uh i would also 
add uh, some uh, suggestions for students to nurture their creativity. So how to sharing the way I do myself, how I, I come up with ideas. But first of all, our project is called Solar Pan Nomads because uh, we are, uh, we described what solar punk normally is. is uh, if you're not familiar with solar punk, uh, solar punk is a vision of the future, uh, a positive vision of the future where the humanity will have solved uh, all the main problem uh, through technology. Uh, and uh, we come up with the idea of uh, a new way of uh, being nomad uh, using zero carbon vehicles. And um, for example, using a sailing boat uh, with electric engine or using uh, electric vans uh, that recharge themselves with solar panel and uh, this kind of new vehicles. But basically we're now focusing on the lifestyle. So how you can imagine to have a future, a nomadic future. And this is very important for two reasons. The, the first one is that, uh, um, I don't want to be pessimistic, but uh, climate change is a reality. And uh, very soon, uh, local condition will be very challenging. And so being nomadic, I'm a biologist, so I know that being a nomadic uh, is, uh, uh, is good for your, uh, to increasing your um, resilience. So your capacity to uh, resist uh, to external input. So imagine to have a future where you have your, uh, a vehicle that is completely zero carbon and uh, you can move when there is a hot wave or when there is uh, uh, floods, you can really move and still uh, be active. We are targeting our project change maker because for us it's very important that in future change maker will be uh, able to be uh, active even during uh, challenging periods and also because uh, uh, for a change maker, for somebody who is really changing the world as a profession, uh, being nomadic also add the, uh, another value that is bringing his ideas around the world. So this uh, is very important for uh, sharing the information and sharing the vision of a solar punk uh, future. So this is what we are building. We are we described this lifestyle. Uh, about a year ago, and then uh, we started to build uh, a community around it. And now we are uh, into a more operative phase and we are building some vehicles, including wine vehicles in India, uh, in Southern India. But uh, what I really would like to share with you is uh, how to um, uh, increase uh, your creativity, because uh, we are talking about the new environment, a lot of opportunity, and uh, Pranav uh, really, um, he said, highlighted very clearly uh, how positive is uh, this space and the opportunity is giving for, uh, um, for Indian students, for example, and also how being in ReFi can give you, um, I mean, in ReFi you can play a very important role and so it give you, can give you a, a mission for your life, a meaning of your life, and this is very important. But uh, how do you come up with new ideas? How you can do that? Because uh, we know having uh, ideas is not very, always very easy. And specifically for young people, sometimes it's a little bit challenging. And so my advice is that, that uh, you have to learn to live a little bit more in the future. So you have to uh, um, feed your mind a lot, not only with what you're studying now, but also a lot about, um, you have to learn a lot about the future and how you can learn about the future. For example, using fiction, using uh, uh, sci-fi or using uh, uh, mangas or using um, art. I mean, all, all these means that uh, tell you a vision of the future because in this way you will uh, learn to uh, stay more in the future, a little bit to daydream more. And this is very important because uh, many of the important ideas come from there. Many of the visionary uh, businessmen, entrepreneur, they live in the future. They still, they always think about the future. How, what if uh, uh, in the future, all vehicle will be electric? And now you have Tesla. I mean, you have to really learn about the future and learn to live in the future. 
And then uh, another advice that I wanted to share is that uh, you have to give time to your mind. Sometimes we don't come up with idea because we don't leave to our brain the right time to come up with ideas. So always try to have some free time for thinking and for grounding. So forget about the studies for a moment and just fantasize about your future and try to come up with idea. Then creativity is something that uh, you can increase. You can uh, train your creativity and a good way is to learn about how you get creative. When, when are the, um, when normally you are more creative. For example, for myself, I learned that uh, my most creative uh, period in my life are uh, coming after very intense period of uh, stress, let's say. So if I, for two weeks or a month or a few months, I really work hard on a project and I don't have much time to free thinking, I know that after the, this project is ended, my creativity will just boom and I will have a lot of new ideas and a lot of new perspectives. And, uh, but you maybe you will be different. Maybe you will learn that your creativity is higher in early in the morning or in the weekend. Try to learn about yourself. And this is very important. And then another, um, how you say, a, another uh, suggestion is uh, uh, try to learn about mirroring. Sometimes the best ideas, they don't come up, uh, or you don't come up with very good idea by yourself, but maybe you just have um, a hint of an idea, but mirroring with somebody else, talking with somebody else, it's so important because it will help you to refine the idea and also uh, going from this little hint to maybe an amazing idea for an amazing new project. So. Try to do with some friends at the college and try to, I don't know, maybe one, one hour every week, you just sit down and you try to come up with ideas and then your mirror, your friends will help you, it will listen to you and it will help you maybe to, uh, to refine this idea. Mirroring, at least for me, is so important in my creative process. And uh, yeah, these are the main, uh, how you say the main um, aspect of creativity that I, I wanted to share with you. And then if you want to be a more precise about refi and, um, or let's, uh, let's say talking about creative in refi. Uh, there, there is uh, an important aspect here is that uh, refi is really uh, about, uh, let's say saving the world or building a sustainable society. So here, some of the rule of the normal, uh, Mm, a business uh, a space uh, doesn't apply. So uh, since uh, your idea can really be a revolutionary change the world, normally people in Refi are more generous, are more open. They are more ready to talk about their ideas and they are more ready to work together. There is less competition. There is uh, more uh, um, support. So uh, a way to refine your idea, for example, is using your social media, Try to come up with many ideas and share it. Don't be scared about sharing your ideas. Yeah, maybe somebody will uh, steal your idea. They will develop before you, but then still your idea will have, uh, bring value to this world. And if you nurture your creativity, you will see that you will have a hundred or thousand of ideas. So don't be scared of sharing it. And, uh, and find other people that can support you. Maybe you'll find your dream team and you will build your dream project. Yeah, back to you, Yertu. Thank you for that uh, earth based So um, I'll pass it on to, I think, uh, who's the one who's here, Sneha? Maybe, Yeah. I think we have a new co-host, yes. Hey folks, so I guess a lot of you folks already have a very good idea of the use cases and also how can you go about the ideation. Uh, we have another mentor with us, Laisha. Uh, and if you haven't checked out her work, you definitely should. She is uh, working right now at Goldman Sachs and um, has been a Polygon fellow. She also runs this amazing newsletter called Bits and Bytes. Uh, with the power packed a lot of information about Web3 and everything that is happening. 
and can be a very, very good resource for all of you folks to tap into to understand how to go about uh, thinking of this first idea, uh, especially for hackathon based projects. So, Laisha, do you want to take it forward? Sure, Sneha, thank you for that introduction. Hi, everyone. Um, I mean, feel free to, you know, share your ideas, bounce it off of me, because um, honestly, ReFi is just an extension of what we do in the DeFi space with an increased focus on climate and sustainability initiatives. So would love to hear what you are thinking about. Um, are you thinking on the DAO side or how you can, uh, you know, make this space more better in terms of how CO2 certificates are issued and all of the other things. So, I mean, feel free to unmute yourself and... Uh, uh, discuss what you are thinking and uh, we can work together to kind of refine it and uh, understand more of how you can structure our idea and build something useful during the hackathon. Um, Sneha, is there a process for them to speak or they can just simply unmute themselves? Yeah, Laisha, yeah. they can, uh, they are actually putting the ideas on the chat. Uh, so there are, if you scroll up also, uh, there are a bunch of ideas that folks have put here. Um, what I would suggest is maybe like, uh, I don't know if anybody is starting to think of the implementation already, but uh, uh, if you are thinking in terms of like uh, for your idea, what are some of the uh, tech elements that you can use? I think those are the questions you, you should ask Laisha because she can help you refine for example, if you're looking to say build like a crowdfunding platform or something like that, then you can just like, uh, you know, put a question in terms of like, what are some of the, uh, you know, things that Laisha recommends you to use, like do, what kind of programming language or uh, doesn't have to be too deep, but just to get a sense of how you can architect your idea. I think those kind of questions will be most useful. But if, if you haven't thought about that yet, that's also okay. Like we'll have a mentor check-in that will happen next week and you can sort of ask your questions at that point in time as well. So anything tech related. So I know some of you have already put your idea, but anything tech related that you want to ask, feel free to put it on the chat and uh, Laisha is here to just sort of help you, you know, with that. And later on as well, you can put it on the Telegram chat. So I think uh, that should be good as well. Uh, Pranav, if you had anything else on your flow, I think you can continue. And maybe the questions can keep coming as people are thinking. Awesome. Thanks so much for that. I have really loved all of what has been shared in the chat. Uh, but you know what, guys who are and, and ladies, of course, sorry for that you are not pushing the envelope out here, if I may say. You know, everybody is thinking low-hanging fruit, which is great for a hackathon, right? But your vision has to be really larger, right? And you obviously want to start off with something small that you can bite and chew on, but the goal has to be like huge, right? So for example, how can you, Shorian just put out, right? How can you incentivize corporate companies to use sustainable tech instead of traditional practices, right? Let's translate that, right? Think of a, a use case where you would start off. It's a great vision. It's a great sort of, you know, big problem out there. Could you potentially think of, okay, how do you ensure that companies stop using plastic cups in their offices, right? Is there a solution to be built out there? Bring it right down there to that level, right? And here's the key, you know, one would think that, Solving this would require you to track how many cups they are buying. But actually, if you think about it, solving this would, re would require you to track their waste. You know, what is the waste that comes out of that company at the end of the day? If you're tracking that and you're incentivizing or penalizing them there, you would have the solution. And that's actually happening, right? Uh, auditors, Harkat, absolutely, you know, you can do that, but you can't put one person outside every company, right? What's the use of technology then, right? What you really want to do is to catch, you know, sort of our work with the waste stream and then catch or sort of incentivize models out there, which by the way are happening. So I want to use this opportunity to highlight one important point, right? Most people talk about climate, climate change, climate action as this big problem that we can never solve. 
Well, here's an interesting fact. Couple of years back, plastic used to be thought of similarly, right? We all used to think, you know, okay, plastic is a big problem. It still is, mind you. But governments across the world have come together to work on the plastic problem. Major strides have been made. It's still work in progress, but I can assure you today, companies, FMCG companies who are putting plastic wrappers on the road, they have been forced by the government to account for the plastic that they put outside and make sure they take or recycle a lot of that back. So those policies are on in place. They're coming in place. Similarly, climate will have such policies coming into place. Now, the what is the opportunity there? You know, we are not the government, but the opportunity there is when companies are looking for how to, you know, address this new parman that the government has ordered, your solution should be ready. Your solution around waste should be ready. Your solution around carbon credits should be ready. Your solution around digital measurement reporting and verification should be ready. Think of, you know, your solution around electric vehicles should be ready. All of these are huge opportunities in the space, right? So start off with this one big, huge problem. Break it down to like one small use case that you really want to work on. And essentially, that's where you then work on this in the hackathon and keep building it out. It's the last nine minutes. We, you know, this is one big, very attractive thing that Ritu just put up there. Right, Ritu, thank you so much for that. Right, you see out there, those are some very interesting numbers. I can promise you there's a lot more money behind there. Right, I can promise you that all the major companies today are looking at backing solutions because they know the wind has changed. They know the governments are coming in. So do you know there's actually legislation already happened in the US as well as, uh, you know, in EU around all of this, around reporting. So earlier, so just to, you know, just to make this very clear, earlier, you know, all companies, especially public listed companies, had to disclose their exposure to certain things, right? These are like rules. Rules are coming in which require companies to declare their exposure to climate change. So, for example, if their supply chains are vulnerable to climate change, they have to disclose that in their financial information, right? It's coming to that, right? Climate insurance is going to be like huge, guys. So, if anybody's working in that aspect, great opportunity out there. If we can link that to refi and there are enough and more cases around that, even better opportunity, right? So all of these are great ideas. Yeah, Ary Aryan, please go ahead and unmute yourself. Go for it, sir. And then Madhav after that. Um. Yeah, hi everybody. Uh, I have to unmute myself because uh, my idea is like a bit uh, long to explain. Actually, I would say this is, uh, I've been daydreaming about this, so it's not a complete idea. Um, so my is like as I said, it is about connecting the farmers uh, with the people who's gonna buy vegetables, but it's not gonna be just vegetables. Um, actually, mine is a complete idea of the community build, being the farmers. So uh, it's gonna be the entire community of farmers where they're gonna support each other. So, for example, in cities we can do terrace farming where we, they could grow vegetables and other stuff, but they cannot produce milk because they'll not have enough space to um, raise a cow get milk the cow every morning so we could like have the community is going to be built by the farmers where uh they'll be given a soul bond and a uh, soul bond token uh, i think most of them would be knowing uh, which uh, a soul bond token when minted into a wallet it's going to be staying in the wallet for ever they cannot be transferred to another wallet so this soul bond token acts as a certificate for the person as uh in, in in almost multiple languages so that everybody will be able to uh, read the uh, certification and only if, if the certification says that the farmer is certified for it because the entire community is going to buy from him and uh, they, the people who's going to buy a certain product from the uh, uh, farmer or anybody who's producing it is going to it's not going to buy uh, using INR or any other like uh, stable currency. It's going to be a token, which is uh, which is by the uh, brought by the community. So everything, every transaction is going to happen with that certificate, with that specific token. For instance, if you're going to buy a vegetable, the, it's going to be put in a marketplace where that specific vegetable will have the entire details of the uh, entire history of uh, from where the uh, it grew and the farmer. And it will have also an idea of preparing a machine or rather I'd say a drone, which would uh, 
which would be like giving out the information about um, the soil conditions uh, during the entire process, whether like it was grown organically, was there any chemicals added, or almost the entire history of the uh, product that was grown in that specific uh, field. That. I, so, that I'm sorry, I'm interrupting here because I definitely want to get Madhav also into the conversation. But just to point yeah. out to you, you know, Prasanna, who's based in Hyderabad, he runs something called Carbon Mint. You could look up, look that up, right? He's been yeah. working in the communities. Uh, there's be there would be very interesting learnings for you out there. It's still a huge problem or a huge challenge that's that needs to be solved out there because there's lots of factors uh, involved. You know, and what we're talking about is a great starting use case. Uh, but one thing I definitely want to mention is that when we are doing all of this, we want to definitely avoid putting in tokens initially because then we immediately run up with this point about we are creating an alternative economy, which we want to do, but not at the beginning. Because the moment you start talking about an alternative economy, no GST, right? Avoiding governments, avoiding banks, avoiding taxes, right? Then the statutory regulations really starts to, you know, get very antsy, as one would call it. So what we really want to do about here is to create that supply side and the demand side for a community to come together, right? And once that matures, then, you know, we can totally avoid this token conversation by simply using something as simple as loyalty points, right? Because loyalty points are legal in India, right? Barter system still works in India. So there are lots yeah. of ways to, how would I say, you know, uh, create the narrative and yet solve the problem. Soulbound tokens works great as a founding member. So there's no securities angle to it. But like I said, lots of interesting things, huge, huge use case. Uh, Prasanna can help. And this is definitely something you should work on. Uh, I would love to bring Madhav uh, Sharma into the picture. Madhav, please unmute yourself and go for it. Yeah. So thank you, first of all, uh, for the session. Like it was quite um, helpful. I have been like listening about the refi space, but never, you know, went deep into it. Um, like what for whatever reason. But for the past uh, couple of months, I have been looking into building uh, wallets on top of uh, public goods, and I see that this is somewhat relatable to that particular theme itself, right? And uh, uh, like I don't have a, an idea right now in my mind, but I had a general question to ask. Like we are talking about farmers, we're talking about you know uh, like solar energy, we're talking about teaching, we're talking about you know bringing uh, impacts. So my question was like, let's say that uh, there's a project in which we are basically focusing on, you know, the users to be able to work on their, like say mental and physical health and like things like that, which like even matters, it, it creates impacts in the society overall, right? Like not directly, but if everybody is healthier, like, like there will be less, um, you know, uh, problems in, in everybody's life as well. So like, does that count in the refi space or like, is it, is it a Absolutely. Different? Absolutely. So what you're talking about is this larger, uh, I would say, domain of behavior, behavior change. Yeah. Right. And absolutely behavior change is, in fact, if you ask me, the that's like the highest bar of climate action. Right. Because behavior, you know, drives the market. We buy the plastic. We buy goods. You know, we buy cars. If we could change our behaviors we could definitely address climate change in a big way. So you're absolutely spot on. You're on the right track. Let me give you a couple of examples of people who are doing this great. There is a project coming up called Wheelcoin, W-H-E-E-L-C-O-I-N, right? What do these guys do? These guys track your daily habits, especially around transportation. So, you know, for example, every day you're traveling by car to a particular place. One day you say, you know what? Today I'm not going to travel by car. I'm going to travel by bus. Because you have now traveled by bus, your carbon footprint is lower. They give you a certain amount of wheel coin. Now this wheel coin, this token is exchangeable for certain benefits in the ecosystem. So what they are again trying to do is they're trying to get you to change your habits. There is another very interesting project that is just starting up called BitGreen, B-I-T-G-R-E-E-N. It's an L1. They have just launched a new app called Habit, H-A-B-B-I-T, right? And what do they do again? They, they want, and this is really addressing what you just talked about, right? Getting you to improve your habits. They've created this little app about changing your habits. So absolutely, you're spot on on the right track. In fact, you know, refi, when we talk about refi, we definitely want to talk about refi for the environment. We want to talk about refi for governments, refi for corporates, but refi for individuals is also very important. 
absolutely important. We all need to regenerate. We have been too long doing all the right things, eating, you know, uh, doing the wrong things, eating the wrong things, you know, uh, lots of wrong happening. You know, you, you know what I mean, right? You all see what your uh, elders have done. I mean, they've got you into this very bad place where you have to now take this challenge of climate action. You can all blame your elders for it. You know, your parents, your grandparents, you know, your whoever, including me to a certain extent. But yeah, that's the fact, right? But now you have to change behavior. And so definitely huge, huge problem area. If you have an idea in there, if you're keen on that space, happy to connect. I can, you know, show more project ideas to you. Uh, love that. Go for it. Yeah. Thanks a lot for uh, playing that role. Uh, anybody else? Any other questions? Guys, what is this? I mean, you guys are so quiet. What happened? I, I love the comments, by the way. You guys were really active on it. But I would I, love um... to have more questions also. Uh, I can uh, I can pr quickly present uh, the uh, idea for my project. Um, so uh, um, uh, my name is uh, Harakats, Bobby Harakats. I represent a team uh, called the Globe Cal Green Mission, which is uh, based in uh, West Bengal. And, uh, the idea that we had is um, uh, to uh, 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 to deal with the to put together a very big project that combines agroforestry and uh, education and uh, kind of uh, creates a network, uh, an, ag an agroforestry network by uh, combining uh, individual farmers as well as uh, educational institutions like schools. Uh, what we want to do is we want to uh, involve schools by uh, putting seed banks in every uh, school that partners with us uh, for children to be able to uh, be involved in uh, in food uh, development and you know and growing food from seed and from clone at a very young age. Uh, in addition to that, is uh, we want to take the surplus that people are uh, are growing either individually or in their own farms, and then uh, and then put this surplus into resource libraries, where uh, we can redistribute any kind of food surplus, whether it's seed or fertilizer or what have you. To, uh, to community members that need it. So it's like a library system, similar to how you go to check out, uh, check out books, you would go to check out any sort of agricultural equipment that you need, like a fertilizer, um, you know, uh, equipment, like a tractor or something like that. So that, that's the idea is to uh, put, uh, yeah, uh, it's that, a community. Absolutely love that. I'm sorry I'm interrupting you because I'm really excited. So, you know, what you're describing actually has multiple business models built in there. The first one, the moment you involve school children is you have something like impact to learn or impact to earn because you're, you know, you're, create, you're, you're helping school students learn as well as create impact. And that itself is something that you definitely build out, probably get some grant for uh, and, you know, sort of take it to another level. Then the other part that you're building upon is just, you know, building community resources so that people can, you know, use it uh, like a library. There's a huge business model in there too. Again, huge opportunity out there. Obviously, all of these are like long-term, high, how would I say, intensive and, uh, you know, high effort projects, but great value out there. Love that. And again, the project that I've shared with you, Guardians of Earth, it's an Australian project led by an Indian, by the way, uh, a doctorate. The lady is a powerhouse. What she's been doing is she's been using uh, this game that she's created to get people to map out biodiversity, right? So when you're talking about agriculture, agroforestry, biodiversity is an absolute shoe in You know, it definitely should be part of your project because, you know, agroforestry is, again, too human-centric. Fact of the matter is we need to be more biodiverse. We need to think about biodiversity rather than agroforestry, Right. Uh, I'll stop there because we are a little over time. I would have loved to have more questions in case it's allowed, but I'll hand it back to Ritu. Yeah, Ritu, all yours. Thanks for that, Pranav. Uh, just before we close out, anyone else with anything um, that you would like to speak about? Uh, just give a small second for that. Yeah, hi. Uh, yeah, uh, can we uh, start? Uh, sure. Yeah. Go on, so, uh, uh, I just want to know what is the scope of the hackathon. So, I mean, in case if any projects got selected, uh, so are they going to get any further support? 
to launch into the production and do some kind of uh, kind yeah, of uh, so yeah uh, so good question so we have these sponsored tracks and these sponsored tracks are done by uh, different projects and if they select you and you're one of the finalists they'll be working closely with you and then there's possibilities of maybe uh, helping you get a grant or you know uh, supporting you in other ways with resources teammates all those things so uh, there is possibilities i think there will be case to case on each track that we have so i would suggest that uh, go ahead and apply for the tracks and uh, you will get to know as you go uh, what 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 could be done in terms of uh, building further but in terms of grants if uh, you do win it's it's a validation for you you can always definitely check out gitcoin which is uh, a platform that all of us here have relied on Pranav has i have all of our projects have raised funds there so that's a platform that you can explore uh, yeah sure thank you uh, just, just on one last closing note uh, if you folks have not joined the telegram group yet Please join and it's going to drop the link over here and that is where you can stay connected with the mentors and other folks uh, who are, have been guiding you um, and you can have more discussions around the ideas um, and like you know try to deep dive more into the use cases um, so yeah I think that's about it thank you so much uh, to the entire green fill team as well as you hackers joining in and our mentors um, I am just going to drop the link so you can just join the telegram. Thank you. Thank you, folks. Uh, loved being here. Loved all the ideas and thoughts that people have. Uh, we need you. Refi needs you. Climate needs you. Uh, it's the opportunity of your lifetime. I would encourage you to participate. Definitely do join a track. Get your friends in. Uh, because frankly, you know, this it's a challenging time. It's an opportunity, but it's also a big, big, big problem. We need all the help. We need you guys to work on this. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Have a nice day. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.